This is Unbridled with Susan Cain, presented by Thoroughbred. Family owned and operated since 1949. Thoroughbred produces specially designed horseshoes, racing plates, and therapeutic products to enhance equine performance. Learn more at thoroughbredinc.com. The 38th Annual American Farriers Association Convention is underway. I'm with Andrew Ellsbury, President of the Association. Tell us a little bit about what we can expect inside the trade show. Inside the trade show, we're going to get to see all the latest and greatest and newest things for horse and hoof care and for farrier tools. Well, we have an exhibit inside. We would like to educate as many folks as we can about farriers formula. Tell us a little bit about Farrier's Formula for the viewers at home. I'd be glad to. Farrier's Formula is a hoof supplement that's been around for at least 30 years now. In fact, we're credited to, to, to being one of the first in this country. And not only are we here in the U.S., but we're in approximately 24 countries other than the U.S. as we speak. Uh, and essentially what it does, it simply promotes the growth of dermal tissue in the horse. Uh, it's going to grow the mane, tail, and certainly the hoof of the horse. That's all it does. Mike, how can our folks at home learn more about Farrier's Formula? Well, they can give us a call direct at 256-370-7555 or look us up on the web. Or they can call me because I, I believe in it. You we, believe in we've it? We've used it for years, yeah. yeah. And Danny, you're one of the, the foremost teachers uh, from this association. What has this convention been like for you so far? Have you seen many of your old students that have passed through? I see so many of them. It's so neat to see them being successful and making a living. And, uh, you know, and I didn't help them do that. I just give them a leg up. And it's kind of nice to see them go on and uh, do so well in a trade. Before you run into the trade show on me, please tell us, what does the AFA mean to you personally? Uh, education. I mean, without education nowadays... Uh, the modern horse here is not going to go too far. If you don't keep up with the industry and the new products and uh, what's available, you're just, you're going to lose. So that's why I'm here. So I can take uh, information back and share it with people starting out. Raleigh, you come to the convention all the way from Hawaii. What is it about the AFA that you make that trek each year? Well, I've, I've met so many nice people here to begin with. The first guy that invited us to come to, to the convention was Bernie Chapman years ago. He came uh, doing some work for people in, in Hawaii and he said, uh, you should come to the convention one year. What a, what a good time it is and the friends that are met here. And he was right. I've met some really long time friends now, I guess 16, 18 years. Raleigh, you are a certified journeyman farrier. How did that process start for you? Kind of the same way. Bernie uh, was one of the first things he said was to pursue your education. And that's a real good mark of um, where you're at when you get certified. Uh, at their, the different levels. And now, back then, I don't think it made that much difference. But now people are starting to realize that it makes a difference if you have some uh, level of education um, and your skill and your knowledge has a mark behind it. Well, we have you here in the States. Tell us a little bit about horseshoeing in Hawaii. What type of horses do you shoe? Are there many competitions or varied disciplines? Well, over the years, uh, more and more people come to Hawaii and you have basically the same thing you have all over the country, a little bit more condensed. So we shoe all disciplines, uh, mostly pleasure horses, which I think is a bigger part of, um, of a lot of our clientele. Uh, so again, coming to the convention and seeing the disciplines across the country, uh, we get a much bigger picture of what we're doing in Hawaii. So when we go back to Hawaii, uh, we see things that if we hadn't, it would be probably years before we would get the, the scope of what we see here in maybe two or three days. The trade show is about to open its doors. Come on inside with me and we'll unbridle the secrets to hoof care. Yeah, this is our uh, line of shoes over here primarily. We've got our uh, sliding plates over here. And these are real popular. This is the number one selling slide and plate in America. We're usually on the winning horse out the, the futurity in Oklahoma City in the fall. So we're pretty proud of that.
Steve Hosselton from Anvil Brand. Anvil Brand is an absolutely enormous warehouse of literally every brand imaginable in uh, Hoof Care. Tell us what you've got inside the trailer, and I hope you'll take us on a tour. Yeah, we take this on the road about 120 days a year, and Alan does that primarily. And um, it's full of uh, a variety of shoes, tools, everything we carry, but it's it's pretty much driven by the, the event we're at. If we're at Draft Shoe, it's full of draft shoe things and if we're at uh you know out at the quarter horse congress then it's focused on reining horses and that and qu quarter horses depend on where we're at so it's pretty full if you want to take a look oh my gosh where do you want to begin you know it, it, every, we pull up to these and everybody's uh says well you guys it doesn't take you long to set up it actually takes about two weeks to get it ready to go we have our whole line of uh, uh aluminum shoes we make it's a it's a little square more squared toe than than anybody else and it's a smaller line um, with uh, typically double lot to size two and um, the therapeutic aluminum shoe. There's others out there on the market. They're all good. Um, carry most other the folks from uh, Mustad, St. Croix, Capel, all that stuff's in here. We've got Thoroughbred and uh, Victory and uh, even Kirkhart. So there's a wide variety for everybody if they're looking for something. And these are real popular. This is the number one selling sliding plate in America. We've been on most of the winning horses, so it's uh, we're pretty proud of that. We advertise it that way, and, and we're usually on the winning horse out the, the Futurity in Oklahoma City in the fall. It's got some different size in it, three-quarter inch, four holes, and um, it's real popular. How do you keep everything from spilling out as you're traveling? Well, actually, the, the trailer's got a special air ride on it. It's, uh, it was designed first without it, and you'd go 20 miles down the road, and everything would be in the aisles. But literally now, Alan can travel from Oklahoma City across the country, and nothing's, nothing's on the floor. It's that smooth. So Jamco went to work for us and put that together. Hey, Daryl, how are you? It's great to catch up with you at the AFA convention. Yeah, it's good to see you. We're having a great time here. When did you get in? Uh, Tuesday. We came early to see some of the sites here in Chattanooga. And how's the convention been for you so far? Very interesting. Really, it's been very useful. What are you expecting to find in the trade show? I think I'll look at the rasps. We've had I've had some problems with them, see if they've improved those. And there are a couple new shoes on the market that I'm going to check out. Daryl, you are one of the few lady testers in the AFA certification program. Mm -hmm. What is it like being a female doing what's typically a man's job? Uh, it's usually great. Most of the guys have a good attitude about it. I think they recognize that if you've achieved a level of journeyman, it's equal no matter who you are. Um, occasionally there'll be a little friction, but but usually not. Mm -mm. Dusty, you're on the board of directors of the American Farriers Association. How's the convention been so far? It's been good, really good. Good turnout and competition was real good and seemed like we got a lot of stuff accomplished in the meetings. So. And you competed yourself today? Yes. And? Qualified second in the shoeing. So that's good news. <laughs> so you must be shoeing pretty good. Yeah. You also have a shoeing school. Tell yes. us a little bit about that. I have a five-star horse shoeing school in Oklahoma. And uh, it's a 12-week program, six students only, so kind of a specialized, individualized school. How can students find out about that? Look on futurefarrier.com. Hi, Brent. Susan Kane. How are you? Good. How are you? Fine. Do you have a minute to tell us real quick about Stonewall Bodies? Uh, sure, I'll do that. <laughs> what would you like to know? I'd like to know why they're the choice of professional farriers everywhere. They're just raved about. Well, we, um, we've been fortunate to work with a lot of... Um, really good farriers from around the country and so we build something that's uh, durable long-lasting and has good value to it and so that's what, probably about what I can say about that as far as why they choose what it is we I was a farrier for myself um, as I started so I know what it takes to make it work and so I believe you ought to get something for what you pay for Brent can you show us a few of the special features about a stonewell body sure um, actually, this is one of our, uh, our new ones. Uh, it's a small trailer, um, so you can pull it with an SUV. One of the things with them is the fact that you've got a V nose on it, so you've got a little less wind drag on it. Some of the other special features like Stonewell, we like to take advantage of space and efficiency. So here you've got grinders that are stacked, I mean drill presses that are stacked on top of the grinders. We make advantage of small drawers that you can set different things on. The slide outs tend to be something that are pretty popular for people these days. Uh, some of the other things that we deal with, um, lights are a big deal for people. We make sure we put lights in that aren't going to fall out. 
Also, we try to we make our own drawers and cabinets, which are back in there. Seeing the fact that we make everything to size, we can, depending on what size your rig you have, uh, we can make things to fit uh, different sizes. So you're taking advantage of vertical space and not horizontal space, which keeps things a little more efficient that way. Uh, some of the other things about Stonewell is the fact that we, we have uh, TIG welded construction. Uh, we believe in really putting a high finish on it so that you don't have problems and maintenance issues down the road. I just got a whisper in my ear that you own two Stonewell bodies. Two of them I've got the hat for four years now and wonderful, wonderful things with never having repairs or anything like that and it really is a great way to work. Four people can work out of one truck at a time and it's just great. And It has paid off for us in the long run to have the real thing. And so that's the reason we chose them. Lee Lyles is everything when it comes to the National Museum of Horseshoeing Tools and Hall of Honor. Lee, we're looking at this absolutely spectacular display right here uh, from your museum. Tell us a little bit about it and about the museum itself. Well, this particular board has been a mystery to us for a long, long time and it came available last fall. And it's by William Russell, who is one of our greater educators, lived in Cincinnati, Ohio. The particular case was made in 1902, and all of these shoes on here are from the speed horses of that time. We have to remember that harness racing was the largest and oldest sport with horses. And the greater horseshoes, that's what they dealt with, was the standard bread and the, tracer, and the trotters. And this display was exhibited at the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904, and it was also exhibited at the National Horseshoe Convention in 1904. Lee, how did it come to you? Well, uh, in 1904, William Russell offered all of his stuff for sale. Now this entailed, uh, this is case number 12 in his 10th edition of his book. He wrote about 12 uh, horseshoeing books from 1879 to 1907. And there's pictures of this board in his 10th edition. And uh, talks about you know the years it was used and so forth in different events and uh, he offered all this stuff for sale but it's been a mystery as to where it's been and I've got a man that uh, goes to some different type uh, collector auctions that I don't get to go to way out in the west and uh, he called me one night and said Lee said uh, there's two shoe display boards in Deadwood South Dakota and he sent me to a website to look at them, and I went in there, and the minute I saw them, I knew exactly who had made them. And uh, so I tried to call him back, couldn't get a hold of him. Finally, a couple of days later, I got him on the phone. He was on his way up there to look at them and called me back. He said, Lee, said, too big to get in my car. I said, well, uh, his name is Lee also. I said, Lee, I said, uh, I, I'll be there as soon as I can get there Saturday morning. I said, I'm, I'm on my way. I got in my big truck. It took a year of salary to buy these two boards in that auction. Somebody was uh, bidding on me on the telephone. We didn't think it'd ever go that high. But I knew the history of them. Nobody else knew the history of them. And I knew what it meant to the horseshoeing industry is to be able to see them and, and enjoy them. So I sacrificed uh, some money and bought them. Now, actually, there's five display boards on this one rolling uh, exhibit here. Two of the boards hung in a veterinary uh, clinic in, uh, in Wisconsin and were sold in the 1950s. I had a letter when they were originally sold. Then I have a new case on the backside that is over 100 years old. It was made in Walla Walla, Washington. And I just got it last week. I've been dealing on this board for four or five years. And the people had to put their mother in a nursing home and decided to sell it to help her out in the nursing home. And, I drove 4,700 miles a, a week ago to get this board to, to exhibit it here. Thank you, Lee. Thank, Thank you. you for all you do. Just over my shoulder is Cody Gregory. Cody was the youngest gentleman to get a certified journeyman credentials at the age of 14. We saw you competing earlier today. How did it go? Oh, uh, it went pretty good. Um, I thought I could have done a little bit better, but I had a lot of fun and got done in all the classes. Well, they looked like some pretty complicated shoes to make. What was the most difficult aspect to you? Oh, just getting them cleaned up and ma making them all get the lines right and all that. Yes, ma'am. You were the youngest certified journeyman farrier? Yes, uh, ma'am. Yes, ma How'd you do it? 
Um, homeschooling, I had a good instructor. My dad, you know, runs Heartland Horse Shoeing School down in Lamar. And so I was just kind of raised around it and built my first shoe when I was four and trimmed my first pony when I was four and just kind of part of life. So what advice would you have for students and, and young people that are interested in getting certified themselves, but they didn't have quite that early of a start? Oh, you know, it's never too late to get going. Just uh, practice and go to some clinics and from the top hands, you know. You can really learn a lot from them. Well, Cody, thank you so much and best of luck in the competition. Okay, thank you. Mitch Taylor is the owner and director of the Kentucky Horseshoeing School. Mitch, you've got such a great reputation for teaching students in the farrier industry. Tell us a little bit about your school. Well, it's, a, um, it's in the central Kentucky. We have a lot of horses to work on. Um, we, um, our school building is in an old 1930s school, and we've built some additional buildings on. Uh, our, our most popular course is 22-week course. Interesting thing I found out in doing research that since 2006, since I started my 22-week course until today, 98% of my students that have graduated are still shoeing horses full-time. Mitch, how can uh, prospective students find out more about your school? Well, they can just go to uh, KentuckyHorseshoeingSchool.com and go to the website. They can call us or they can come visit us. I always like for any prospective student that's going to give six months of their time and the money involved and the, the blood, sweat and tears involved, I'd like to have an interview with them. I'd like to come to the school, meet them, for them to meet the staff that we've got. We've got a real good team of journeyman horsers that are instructors. Go out with us a little bit, maybe sit in the lecture and just make sure that you know what you're getting into. And then when you go home, I really uh, advise people to find some farriers in their area to travel around with them so that they know exactly what they're getting into. These are the ladies of the AFA. <laughs> ladies. One of the most fun booths at the convention is that of Harry Patton. Harry was a legendary farrier. And right over here is his widow, Ada. Ada Gates Patton. Tell us about Harry. You know, I had been shooing for about eight years, and every man I had ever gone to ask to help me had said, get out of here, girly. I'm not going to put you in the truck, but my wife would never like that. I, I'm not after you. I'm after your knowledge. So I came to California, and I met Harry, and of course, he was drop dead handsome, you know. Oh, but, yeah, I know. I was really just asking him to help me, and I said, Harry... Um, would you help me, you know, learn how to take my test for the racetrack? He said, sure. Well, I could have just fallen over because finally somebody said yes. So anyway, uh, Harry trained me and I took the test at, at the uh, racetrack at Santa Anita and I became the first woman in the United States and Canada to pass the uh, racetrack, you know, journeyman union test. So Harry and I were together for 11 years and then I finally got smart and, and married him. I was too scared of commitment. Anyway, people just say, oh my God, how could that man marry that woman? <laughs> and I said, that was easy. For 23 years, he completely and utterly ignored me. <laughs> but Harry was in the Hall of Fame. Um, he was a great man who taught everybody. He never asked for anything in return. We're looking, we're looking for a tour of the booth. We're looking for a tour of the booth. We have some Billy uh, Crothers tools. We have some Derek Gardner tools. Jim Keith, Jim Poor. Uh, we have some of the knives from some of the different guys. Uh, we've got uh, some of the new um, concave shoes that are brought in from Billy Crothers from Wells. Uh, and then on the other side, we have a education area with uh, all kinds of books. Um, we've got the founder book from uh, Dr. Butler and Dr. Gravely. Uh, we've got um, Simon Curtis's books over here. We just sold our last uh, Dr. Butler's book, The Principles of Horseshoeing uh, 3. But we're having a great show here. Uh, the men are enjoying themselves, and we're having fun doing it. All right. Well, Mike, I'd like to show our viewers at home more about concave stock. I hear about the Billy Crothers shoes all the time. I want to see it in person. Okay. This one has the, the toe clip on it. And this one has the, the quarter clips on it. We've got it in all the different sizes from um, 5 eighths, 3 eighths, all the way up to uh, half by uh, inch and everything in between. Uh, we've got them front, we have them in the front pattern, both toe clipped 
on clipped and side clipped and in the hind patterns we have it in uh, non clipped or side clipped whatever size the the guys are looking for uh, concave is a great shoe to to use in your uh, endurance horses or in your grand prix jumpers or your mountain horses, uh, it's great traction, it hangs in there. Uh, you'll find on your dressage horses, your big warm bloods, that it stabilizes them. They're more comfortable when they use concave. Yeah. Okay. Um, great shoe to use. It's getting more and more popular here in the United States uh, all the time. Is concave stock something that owners at home should ask their farriers about or ask for? I, yeah, I think if you're a, a, a owner that's uh, in an athletic event, I think if you talk to your farrier about concave, the one thing about concave, it helps stabilizes your bigger horses. They're more comfortable with it. When they land, they take off. And this is something we're looking for. In your barrel racing horses, I do a lot of barrel horses. And what I hear from the gals uh, that ride barrel horses is that the, the horses are f more sure of themselves as they take the turns. They get in the ground and out of the ground faster. And this is very important on our, our barrel horses. Uh, your endurance horses are the same way. They're, they're allowing them from slipping over the different terrains, but they're coming in and coming out easily for them. Well, that's great information. Thanks so much, Mike, and have a fantastic trade show. Thank you very much for taking the time and talking to us. Vibram is a really popular name in the consumer markets for making soles for shoes. What are they doing at the AFA convention? Come on, we'll find out. Sally, what is Vibram doing here? We expect to see you on the bottom of a human I, foot. I, well, uh, Kevin actually has some Vibram soles. They're, they're uh, you know, a huge history, excellent, excellent shoe soles, and we've gotten into pads with Vibram. So we've got a very, very durable rubber product, two layers of rubber, and one is uh, a, a 75 shore hardness um, that's a hoof side for a little bit of cushioning and shock absorption and then we've got the harder material 90 shore hardness that's uh, the shoe side and we've gotten great results very durable long lasting and uh, we're getting fabulous feedback you've got a few different shapes and sizes here yeah. i've seen a rim pad and maybe a little bit of a wedge pad can yeah. you just give us a brief um, description on these sure well we've got we've got rim pads we've got small and large rim pads um, and we also have our full pad which is a small and we have a large uh, full pad as well. These compounds that we're using in our pads are highly durable. They're used in our in the in our military soles. So they're you know I mean they're they're responsible. They take care of our soldiers. You know, and um, you know the long long years of business that we've been involved in Vibram. Um, we're now you know trying to help out horses. So there's a there's a, an excellent history behind our product. Next time on Unbridled. So you have to be proactive in the care given to the horse and, and keep him in the show ring or at the racetrack or whatever that horse is meant to do. That's next week on Unbridled with Susan Kane.